بسم الله والحمد لله الحمد لله وحده ثم الحمد لله وحده ثم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الأمين أما بعد. Today I'm going to be talking about a few interesting things. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, I want to talk about why Surah Al-Maryam is Surah number 19. And what is the significance of that? And in order to understand why Surah Al-Maryam is Surah number 19 and the miracle of it being Surah number 19, and what does it mean? What does it tell us? What is the uh, message? Not a hidden message but a clear message for the one that wants to understand. So let me review the surahs of the Qur'an for uh, in, 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 in a summary, and then we'll go into the details. So, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The Qur'an starts with Surah Al-Fatiha. In Surah Al-Fatiha, you ask for guidance. The answer to that guidance is ذلك الكتاب This is the book لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين It is guidance for the people who have taqwa The first four surahs after Fatiha meaning the first five surahs deal with primarily two subjects the sharia the rules of fasting the rules of jihad the rules of hajj the rules of eating, the rules of wudu, the rules of the nikah, the rules of talaq, the rules of economics. All these rules, the rules in the sharia of Islam, mostly come within the first four surahs after Surah Al-Fatiha. And in this, these four surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Ma'idah, these make up the you can say the rules and regulations and the jihad of the ummah. The next four surahs are very important. From surah number uh, 6, 7, 8, 9. These four surahs have to do with the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Al-An'am is discussing the issues that the people were asking the Prophet from the very beginning. Why doesn't an angel come down? Why did the Prophethood be given to Prophet Muhammad out of all the people? Why does not a book of Allah just come down and people get to see it? And why not this? And why not that? And why not this? And this is the discussion of Surah Al-An'am. <coughs> and then Surah Al-A'raf, the next surah, Allah is discussing that if you do not believe in the Prophet, the same thing will happen to you. You will have the same fate. You will suffer the same fate that the previous nations suffered when they did not believe in their Prophet. And that is complete annihilation. And they were saying, bring it on, bring it on. Muhammad, you've been telling us about this punishment of the previous nations, of the people of Lut, of the people of Salih, of the people of, uh, you know, Fir'aun. You took, you your Quran tells us about this, but where is this punishment? And then two surahs after that that have to do with the victory of the Prophet, that after the warning was given, after their questions were answered in Surah Al-An'am and then Surah Al-A'raf, now two surahs having to do with, so four surahs to do with the life of the Prophet, the beginning of the Makki period, the ending of the Makki period, the beginning of the Makki period, answering the questions that they had. Number two, the ending of the Makki period, now giving a warning, if you don't believe in him, there will be consequences. And then, the beginning of the Madani period and the ending of the Madani period. The beginning being the Battle of Badr, which is Surah Al-Anfal. Yes, Alunaka Anil Anfal. They ask you what to do with the spoils of war, which was the Battle of Badr. The first installment of that punishment and the first installment of that victory that was to come was Surah Al-Anfal. And the last victory, the final victory, happened in Surah Tawbah, where the Prophet takes over Makkah as a crownless king 
and now he is the crownless king of Arabia, and they had no choice. They had four months to think about it and to accept Islam. And this is specific to the case of the Prophet So four surahs after Fatih to do with Sharia and talking to the Ahlul Kitab. And then four surahs that have to do with the seerah of the Prophet the life of the Prophet from the Makki period to the victory of the Madani period. From the persecution of the Makki period to the victory of the Madani period. Then now starts a group of surahs whose main purpose is to tell us from Sutul Yunus to Sutul Nur. And this group of surahs has most of the names of the prophets, like Sutul Yusuf, right? Sutul Ibrahim, Sutul Hud, you'll say Sutul Yunus. Okay, so these are the group of surahs that talk about. Allah will always support his prophets. Allah will always support his prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always back up his prophets. So the first after Fatiha, which is the Dua for guidance, which is the whole Quran. And then you have four surahs talking about Sharia and the people of the book. Then four surahs talking about the life of the prophet and the pagans. Then that ends with the victory of the prophet in Surah Tawbah. Now you have a group of surahs talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always support his prophets. Now, who came up with this understanding of Qur'an, this tadabbur of Qur'an, understanding the connection between the surahs? And what does it have to do with Sutul Maryam? As you will see, I will share with you. <coughs> Mawla Hamiduddin Farahi rahmatullah alayhi, uh, he was the one who came up with this division of the Qur'an in his Tadabur al-Qur'an. So let me share with you what I was saying to you now you will understand from this perspective that Fatiha to Ma'idah is Islamic law. But I separated Fatiha uh, as my teacher Dr. Asra'ahim kind of separated it. But he also put because it's Makki and Madani relationship. And then Sutul Anam to Sutul Tawbah. I discussed those and the consequence, final consequence of denying the Prophet was the victory of the Prophet. The first uh, installment of that was Sutul Anfal. Then from Sutul, this is the third group of surahs now, from Sutul Yunus to Sutul Nur. And I'll mention this glad tidings of the domination of the Prophet. But actually, if we put it another way, it is Allah is showing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always will support his Prophets. And the victory in the end will be for the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And so, Sutul Maryam comes in this group of surahs. This is why this was important. To understand where in the Quran Sutul Maryam is located. It is located between Sutul Yunus and Sutul Nur. This is the group of surahs that teaches us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always support the prophets of Allah will be supported by Allah in their mission. Okay? And so now if you look at uh, the surahs in this group, okay? So if you look at the surahs in this group, let's look at the surahs in this group. So let's go back to the beginning so it's very, very clear. We have Fatiha, Bakra, Al Imran, Nisa. This deals with people of the book and the Sharia of Islam. Why? Uh, people of the book and Sharia of Islam has been put together because the people of the book are the people who had the previous Sharia. So as you're talking to the people of the book, you're also adding on to the Sharia and fixing their the things that they had made mistakes in their Sharia and some adjustments to the Sharia like the change of the Qibla are being made. And so these two, the people of the book and the Sharia interrelate with one another. And so these two topics are being discussed together. Then the next uh, group of surahs, okay, <coughs> is uh, from Sutul An'am, this is Makki, and A'raf, two Makki surahs. Anfal and Tawbah, two Madni surahs. The discussion here is the life of the Prophet. 
and the life of the Prophet is related to the pagans, the mushriks, right? Because the Prophet was raised in a mushrik uh, environment, in a tribe. He was raised in a mushrik uh, environment. And so that was his environment. So the life of the Prophet relates to his environment, which was pagan. And in that, Surah Al-An'am and Surah Al-A'raf are the beginning of the, and the ending of the Makki period. Surah Al-Anfal is the Battle of Badr. Surah Al-Tawbah is Fatul Makka. Okay? Now you have a group of surahs, Surah Al-Yunus, and it's being almost indicated here, if you may say, because that, see, we told you Allah supports His Prophets. And didn't Allah support Prophet Muhammad in his victory? And now you have Surah Al-Yunus, and Surah Al-Yunus, and this is where, like I said, the largest names of the Prophets also come. This group of surahs that have to do with Allah will always support His Prophets. Okay? And starting with Surah Yunus, even the surah is named Surah Yunus, named after a Prophet. Surah Al Hud is named after a Prophet. Surah Al Yusuf is named after a Prophet. Then you have Surah Al Ibrahim named after a Prophet, right? And then in this group of surahs, you have Surah number 21, which is Surah Al Anbiya, the surah of the Prophets. Okay? And in there is Surah number 19, Surah Al-Maryam, which is the mother of a prophet. Now, there are only two other surahs, by the way, that are not, that are named after a prophet, but not mentioned in the, in, in this group of, uh, surahs that have to do with that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always supports his prophets. The two surahs outside this are very interestingly, Surah Al-Muhammad, and Surah Al-Nuh. Surah Al-Muhammad and Surah Al-Nuh. Okay? Surah Al-Muhammad and Surah Al-Nuh. I'll only mention one point right now about these two surahs and another one uh, towards the end of this discussion. Surah Al-Nuh wa, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was the first Rasul sent to humanity. And Surah Al-Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, Surah Al-Muhammad was the last Rasul sent to humanity. But here is the dilemma. In this group of surahs, from Surah Al-Yunus to Surah Al-Nur, that have to do with the topic of what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always supports His Prophets, and Allah always gives domination to His Prophets. And this is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Qur'an, mentioned in Surah Al-Muntahina, which everyone should know as we study this group of surahs. So let me... Uh, show that to you, inshallah. Sorry, in Surah Al-Mujadila. And that is this rule that Allah mentioned in ayah number 21. Allah says, كتب الله, Allah has written, like Allah says, كتب عليكم السيام, كتب عليكم الكتاب. Allah has written, Allah has ordained, this is going to happen. كتب الله لأغلبن. I have to be reigning supreme. I will re reign, re reign supreme. And our Rusuli, me and my, my Rasul, they have to always be supreme. In Allah Qawiyun Aziz, indeed Allah is the one who is the, the ultimate source of strength, and He is the ultimate source of power and might. Okay? He's Qawiyun Aziz. Now, this is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in this group of surahs that we are looking at, from Surah Al-Yunus, okay, to Surah Al-Nur, Okay, these surahs, they show us through the Surah Al-Yunus and Surah Al-Hud and Surah Al-Yusuf and all these surahs, they show us again and again, Allah supports His messengers and the nations lose, the messengers they win. The nations they lose, the messengers always win. The people of Lut lost and Lut alayhi salatu wasalam won. The people of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam lost and, and, and Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam himself won. The people that tried to uh, kill Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, they had to submit to Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this, and how Allah protected Ibrahim. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he established Ibrahim and gave power uh, to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So these surahs, they show that the messenger of Allah will always be victorious. But here's a problem. Here's the problem. What about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam? Isa alayhi salatu wasalam came. Oh, and I have to make a clarification here. This is specifically for a 
the messengers, the Rasuls of Allah. Now, prophets of Allah can be killed, like Zakaria was killed, Yahya was killed, right? But ultimately, ultimately, the Rasul, when he comes, he's the messenger of Allah. He will be supported and he will be given victory. And so, the Prophet ﷺ was the Rasul of Allah. And they were being told in Mecca, you better believe, otherwise look at the past. But in this group of surahs, there's one exception. Surah number 19. Allah helped Nuh and Lut and protected Ibrahim and you can go on and on. But what about Isa what about Allah saying in the Quran, لَأَغْلِبَنَّ أَنَا وَرُسُلِي Me and my messenger, we have to prevail. Why in Sutul Maryam is in this group of surahs? Why is Sutul Maryam in this group of surahs that whose main topic, the main theme is that Allah will prevail His messengers that He sent? This is to tell you that the story has not yet ended. And this is to tell you this is why this has been made Surah number 19. I'm going to come to that. But first understand why it is in this group of Surahs that mentions the name of all the Prophets in the terms of the names of the Surahs in the Quran. Right? In this group. Sutul Ibrahim, Sutul Yunus, Sutul Yunus. Right? Uh, and in, in this group, of surahs is also the surah of the Anbiya. And in number 19 is Sutul Maryam, the mother of a prophet, of a Rasul. And just as the Prophet is being told what? That he will be dominant. He will have supremacy. Surah number 19 is indicating to you that Isa والسلام, will also be given domination. See, let me go back here. So, Sutul Yunus to Sutul Nur, the main topic of this third group of surahs is the glad tidings of the domination of the Prophet Okay? And in this is Sutul Maryam. But Prophet Isa والسلام, was not given domination. They apparently, they say, uh, Isa ibn Maryam. We killed Isa ibn Maryam. How does this make sense? There's a contradiction here, unless you understand in which group of surahs this is in. What is the rule of Allah? The sunnah of Allah is, Me and my messengers have to dominate. And so here is a messenger of Allah. He was apparently, according to some people, killed. And so Allah is saying, no, no, don't be mistaken. This is surah number 19. This is in a, the third group of surahs that's telling you that the messengers of Allah always prevail. And therefore, Isa والسلام, has to prevail. And if you saw him leave, he will come back and he will prevail. And he will prevail as himself, as Isa والسلام, will prevail, but also the deen of Muhammad والسلام, for which he was sent to all of humanity will also prevail. And Isa والسلام, when he comes back, he will prevail, help prevail the deen of Muhammad and that will be the domination of the deen of Muhammad وسلم, and the domination and the removal of the nation that he was sent to, just like the people of Nuh were removed, and the people of Hud were removed, and the people of Salih were removed, and the people of Lut were removed, and all the people, the people of Musa who opposed him, Fir'aun and his armies, they were removed. Why? Because they opposed the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so now, <coughs> this surah number 19 is telling us something. Because it is in a very special place in the Quran. It is surah number 19. And surah number 19, being surah number 19, the Quran tells us uh, something about number 19. Right? The Quran tells us, alayha, okay? Alayha, tisata uh, ashar. Okay? That in the hellfire, let me show you the verse of the Quran so I can be clear on it too. So in ayah number 30, Allah says, عَلَيْهَا تِسَعَةَ عَشَرَ On it are 19. 
And then Allah says, And we didn't make the people of the fire except for angels. Don't think there's average human beings that will be there as guards in the hellfire, 19 guards. Anyone could think, oh, I could beat 19 guards. This is what happens, what the people of Mecca said. No, we didn't make them except malaika. And we didn't make that number except as a fitna. And so, Isa والسلام, has become a trial for humanity, for the Christians, and for the Muslims, who deny that Isa والسلام, is coming back. For the people who deny the truth. What and to give certainty to the people of the book that when we the Muslims will say what Surah number nineteen says, it will give them certainty this is the truth. And when we the Muslims say to the people of the book that we like you believe he is coming back. You we like you when we say what Surah number nineteen is saying, and when we like you say that he's in the, he, according to his position of the surah, the surah, surah al-Maryam, that he is coming back, that will give them certainty that this is the truth. To who? To who? To the people of the book. لِيَسْتَيْقِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا And it will increase the people of Iman in their Iman. So on the one side, Surah number 19 is a, and over here I want to mention the connection with this surah also, because this surah starts with the domination of the, of the Prophet wasallam. that this surah was a early Makki surah telling the Prophet, you will dominate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ And make your Lord supreme. And in this surah, Allah talks about number 19. And surah number 19 is talking about that messenger of Allah that will come back, that will play a role in making the the message of the Prophet ﷺ supreme. I hope you were able to follow what I was saying. But I have more to say. So now listen. <coughs> the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah sends a messenger and the messenger has to prevail. This is the rule. La aghlibanna ana wa rusuni. I have to prevail. And this number 19 is a fitna. For who? For the people who deny the truth. People who deny the truth, this is a fitna. So you have like Circus 19, you have the 19 hijackers, you have 9-11, and you have so many things. That is fitna for the people who deny the truth. Okay? That the Muslims who are blind can't see that what is the reality of things. Well, too sorry, sorry for you. But it is also a source of increasing iman for the people that believe. And we've seen how number 19, uh, in terms of the number 19, how it plays a role in the Qur'an. Everybody knows that. I don't want to go into that. I want to talk about why number 19 and how number 19 plays a role in increasing the certainty of the Ahlul Kitab and the people of iman today. Because I've talked previously about how number 19 is a fitna. And it relates to the fitnas of the world, whether it be 19 hijackers, 9-11, COVID-19, etc., etc. I'm not going to go into all of that. There are more than that, actually. But it is also a source of increasing your iman. And it is to tell you that you have to have iman and certainty that there's a, there's a reason why Allah placed Surah Maryam as Surah number 19. There's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed Surah Maryam Amongst the surahs whose main theme is the messenger of Allah will dominate. It, it, there is a reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put surah number 19 amongst the surahs where Allah shows over and over again how he supported his messengers, how he supported his prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always gave them victory. <coughs> so now let us uh, go back okay, to... Uh, these this group of surahs, okay? So this group of surahs, starting with Surah Yunus, who is a prophet, Surah Hud, which is a name of a prophet, Surah Yusuf, which is named after a prophet, Surah Ibrahim, which is named after a prophet, right? And then you have Surah Maryam, which is named after a mother of a Rasul, 
and you have Sutul Anbiya. Okay? And there are other things that relate to prophethood here. Of course, you have uh, Sutul Taha here also. Okay? But I'm going to leave those uh, names of the Prophet uh, out for a second. Okay? But the Prophet is also mentioned in this group in the name of Sutul Taha. Okay? And now what I want to focus on is you have Sutul Maryam. And all the names of the prophets are in these, this group of the uh, surahs, except for two prophets, Sutul Nuh and Sutul Muhammad. And over here, I'll share with you something interesting. Sutul uh, Muhammad is surah number 47. And Sutul Nuh is surah number 71. And if you subtract 71 from 47, okay, what do you get? You get 24. Okay, so you get 24. And so perhaps the reason why uh, if you take sort of number 47 and 71 and you subtract it, you get the number 24. Why? Because there are 26 messengers of Allah, all nabis of Allah mentioned in the Quran. 25 by name and one just qala lahum nabiyyum in Sutul Baqarah. And so if you take 24, Sutul, uh, Sutul Nuh 25, and Sutul Muhammad 26. So after the Prophet, there are 25, but with the Prophet, 26 messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been mentioned in the Quran. And just to give you the list, inshallah ta'ala, <coughs> So you have Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, Idris alayhi salatu wasalam, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Hud alayhi salatu wasalam, Salih alayhi salatu wasalam, Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, Shu'ib alayhi salatu wasalam, Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Harun alayhi salatu wasalam, Daud alayhi salatu wasalam, Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam, Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, Ilyas alayhi salatu wasalam, Yasa alayhi salatu wasalam, Zulkifil alayhi salatu wasalam, Zakariya alayhi salatu wasalam, Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, and the 26th Prophet is the one who's referred to in the Quran, okay, uh, is uh, Samuel, okay, and the Quran does not give his name there, it says, Qala lahum nabiyyuhum, and their Prophet said. So how many Prophets are mentioned? 26 Prophets are mentioned in the Quran, and the distance between uh, Surah uh, 71 to for, Surah 47. Okay, Surah 47 is Sutul Muhammad. Surah 71 is Sutul Nuh is 24 plus the two Surahs. That's 25 and 26. So 26 messengers of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned. And perhaps this is a reasoning. You can say that the reason for the distance between Sutul Muhammad to Sutul uh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, let us go back to <coughs> the point I was mentioning is that people say, and uh, let me mention this, uh, that Sha'ulu la muhaddis din bi rahmatullah alayhi, he says that you can eventually take everything back to the Quran. For example, when we go to Ruku, what do we say? Subhanahu rabbi al -Azim. And in Sutul Waqi'ah, what does it say? فَصَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ Okay, take the name of Allah, do tasbih of Allah, glorify Allah with Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. And so the Prophet took that and put that in Ruku. And then سَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَلَى Sutul A'la Tasbih or glorification for our Rabb, for my Rabb, who is most high, you have سَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَلَى so Shaulullah Muhaddas Dilbi Rahmatullah says you can take every sunnah and find some indication of it in the Quran. Same way, way when we look at this group of surahs that have to do with the victories given to the messengers of Allah and in indication of the coming victory of Prophet Muhammad in his own lifetime for the Arab world and in the future for gl the global humanity. Okay, that the domination of the Prophet has to happen as a sign that he is a true Prophet. It happened in his own lifetime in Arabia. And the specific 
uh, relationship the Prophet had with his people. Okay, the first installment of that happened in the Battle of Badr, and then finally, and that's Sultan Anfal relates to Sultan Anfal, and then the final victory happened in the Fatul Makkah, and that relates to Sultan Tawbah. And then you have a group of surahs that are mostly Makki that have to do with the Prophet, the Prophets before how they were given victory and how Prophet Muhammad in the future will be given victory. The odd surah here is to Maryam because Isa wasn't given victory. But there's an indication he has to then come back and be given victory. And he will not only be given victory, but he will be giving victory to also the deen of Prophet Muhammad in its second phase which has to do with the global domination of the true deen, okay? Uh, and he will bring the truth to humanity. And so surah number 19 is a fitna in the sense that it is number 19. And so there are people who deny Isa and there are people who accept Isa. There are people who deny he's coming back and those that are accepting he's coming back. So it is a fitna for the people that deny. And it is a source of increasing the iman and certainty of the people of the book that yes, he's coming back. Because of the fitna of Isa wasalam, because of the misunderstanding of Isa wasalam, this is surah number 19. And it is also the surah that increases the belief of the believers. And so when Jabir uh, when he read in Abyssinia Sutra Maryam to Najashi, right, it was powerful. It was like, there's no difference between us and you. Our difference is like this small line. But going back to my main point, that why is Surah number nine, Sutra Maryam Surah number 19? Because it is an indication, because of where it is placed in the Quran, that Isa alayhi will come back. He will dominate the deen of uh, truth, okay? He will also dominate the deen of Prophet Muhammad And this is why this is in amongst the surahs of the Quran that come in group number three that have to that are between Sutul Yunus and Sutul Nur that have to do with the glad tidings of the the victory given that will be given to the Prophet Okay, so I know maybe this was a little bit of a confusing conversation for some maybe uh, but I think for the people that got what I was trying to say it's it's not it's actually quite amazing when you think about it right it's it's like what Shaulullah Muhaddasil said that everything eventually even all the sunnahs of the Prophet you can find aspects of it in the Quran you can find indications of it back into the Quran so the sunnah is the sunnah of the Prophet is and the sayings of the Prophet is, and the ahadith of the Prophet is like a reflection back to the Qur'an. Because the Prophet is sahib al-Qur'an. He's the man of Qur'an. See, his heart is Qur'an. Okay. So now, when we ask the question, why is Sutul Maryam? Surah number 19. It is Surah number 19 because it is an indication that Isa wasalam, is coming back. It is an indication that the deen of Prophet Muhammad will be supreme. It is an indication that some people will reject him. It will be a fitna. And some people will accept. As some people today accept, he's coming back. And many people amongst the Muslims reject him. He's not coming back. But it is also a source of this telling the people of the book, this is the truth about this fitna. And this is the truth about Isa alayhi And we, like you, also believe he's coming back and he's going to bring the true deen and he's going to establish it. And he will be given victory by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will kill Dajjal, the false messiah. So I hope <coughs> this uh, grouping of the surahs that Mawlana Hamiduddin Farahi uh, came to understand is one of benefit to you from Sutul Fatiha to Sutul Ma'idah, the focus is on Islamic law. Sutul An'am to Sutul Tawbah, the consequences of denying the Prophet and the victory being given to the Prophet in the Battle of Badr and in Sutul Tawbah. And then from Sutul Yunus to Sutul Nur, glad tidings being given to what? To the Prophets of Allah that they 
that, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his prophets and dominated their deen and eliminated those that denied them. Now, let's go over this one last time from the list of the surahs. So you have Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Ma'idah, first group. Okay, then next group, and this is the, the Sharia, and the Sharia means the making of the Ummah. Okay, and this is there's a uh, there's a lot more to this, but I'm just leaving it at a very basic level. Surah Al-An'am, Surah Al-Araf, Surah Al-Anfal, and Surah Tawbah. This group is the Seerah of the Prophet, the life of the Prophet, and the victory, the story of the victory given to the Prophet ﷺ from beginning. What he went through, the questions he was asked, his harassment, and finally his victory. Now you have a group of surahs in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows over and over again that Allah will support his messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support the believers. And the messengers and the believers will be given victory. And, and this is the group of surahs that mention most of the prophets except for two. The first and the last rasul, Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Okay, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And so you have in this group Surah Al-Yunus, Surah Al-Hud, Surah Al-Yusuf, Surah Al-Ra'ad, Surah Al-Ibrahim, Surah Al-Hijr, Surah Al-Nahad, Surah Al-Isra, Surah Al-Kahf, Surah Al-Maryam, Surah Al-Taha, Anbiya, Hajj, Mu'minun, and Nur. Okay, and these, all these events are mentioned to explain the fact the messengers of Allah always dominate. The only exception to this is Surah Al-Maryam which is named after the mother of a prophet, Isa alayhis, the mother of Isa alayhis, alayhi salatu And Surah al-Maryam, <coughs> being named after uh, the mother of a prophet, okay, uh, and this surah is the surah that's talking about the, is in a group of surahs that's talking about the, the definite, absolute domination of messengers of Allah as a rule of Allah. That make my will, make my messengers supreme. So Allah places Surah Maryam as Surah number 19 to give an indication to the believers that he, in fact, is coming back. Okay, And there's a reason that this Surah is attached to Surah Al-Kahf. I will talk about that another time. But uh, please share with me and over here, I wanted to mention also that the distance between uh, Surah Al-Muhammad, okay, Surah number 47, and Surah Al-Nuh, which is Surah 71, seems to relate to the numbers of messengers mentioned in the Quran. Okay, and so now let me uh, end here and just uh, say, inshallah ta'ala, I hope, uh, if you can put in the comment section if you benefited from this okay and also if you benefited then also do read the comment section that I have uh, some information there about my telegram channel I also have a donation link there for people that want to help me with that and uh, maybe I will write something else there too inshallah ta'ala so I hope this increased your understanding of the coherence of Quran, the Nazmul Quran, the the how the Quran moves the surahs in a very specific way, and I introduced you today to today to you uh, the ideas of Hamiduddin Farahi Rahmatullahi. May Allah bless him and those that have also, like Dr. Sir Ahmed and others, who have worked to forward his thought further on these his grouping of the surahs that he's come to understand. So anyway, uh, I will end here now, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, please let me know in the comment section if you found this beneficial.